Okay, so I've got my newly acquired OS FT122 Gemini here, and I just opened the box and did an initial inspection. Now I'm trying to decide for this quick look or this look inside how far down I want to tear into this thing just to investigate the condition. I think the first thing I'm going to do here obviously is just take these headers off. <clears throat> Maybe I'll throw those in my cleaner and just see if I can clean those up a little bit. I want to look and see what kind of exhaust valve stem residue I've got on here. Of course I'm doing this and I don't have my magnifier on so let me do that. Okay, so these stems don't look too bad. Um, okay, so the owner, previous owner of this told me that he bought this engine about 10 years ago and he had it in a CMP 91 inch cub until one day he hooked the ailerons up wrong and apparently it went in. He didn't say or elaborate anything more about if there was damage to the engine or not. He said after that this thing went into a spacewalker. <clears throat> he says he thinks he put about a gallon, maybe a little more than a gallon of 10% fuel through it and then it sat for the last two years. So he didn't say whether he bought it used. He probably bought it used himself also. But let's uh, at least get these rocker covers off so we can kind of check that stuff out. Oops. He says as far as he knows, the only thing that's been done to this thing is maybe setting the valves. He doesn't think anybody's ever been inside this engine, and quite honestly, the way that those things felt torqued. I'm almost wondering if they were ever even set. They felt pretty darn tight. That snapping sound is usually an indication I use to let me know if this thing's ever been opened up or not. Okay, so that looks nice and clean in there. I don't know, these things were pretty snug. Hear that? That's what makes me wonder. You don't normally hear that snapping, or I don't normally hear that snapping after something I've tightened down. But you never know, I guess. The owner says he set the valves on it, so I guess he would know. Let's see about... Let's see if we can... I'll never understand this. Never understand why people put so much torque on these damn glow plugs. It's so unnecessary. <clears throat> Son of a bitch, I might have to get the channel locks on that. I don't I really just don't get this. It doesn't have to be that tight. Okay, finally after somebody monkey grip the damn Glow plugs. Freaking ridiculous. Shit doesn't need to be that tight. Yeah, I can kind of see the top of the piston there. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it here or not. So. And I was considering taking the heads off, but honestly, I just don't feel up to doing that tonight. And I think all I'm going to do is maybe just use the box here to support this thing. And take this back, back cover off. Let's see what we've got going on in here. I have no idea how easy this back cover is going to be to remove. Quite honestly, I'm not even sure I really should be doing this. Okay, I've got this heated up, and I think it's going to come off. I just hope parts don't go flying. I'm not sure what to expect here. Maybe just a tad more heat, and I can drop some oil in that gap now. There's a gap all around here, so I'm going to go drop some oil in there and heat it up some more. Okay, I think I got it on the ropes here. Oh shit, okay. Let's see if I can handle this with my gloves off. Okay, so I just screwed the timing up, but I'm kind of glad I did this now. Wow, 
that's really warm. <coughs> that rear bearing looks pretty gross. A lot of this stuff looks pretty gross. Some cam flowers in here. I don't know. This might be a complete tear down because let me zoom in here. Let you see some of these parts. I mean it looks I take it there's a bearing behind there. I don't know that that necessarily sounds great. Okay, so in the background you can hear my ultrasonic going. I have begun the disassembly. I've got the rear cover off and I just was able to get the camshaft gear outside of that bearing or pulled out of that back cover. It was stuck in there and the bearing was stuck with it. So what I've got here is I've got a couple of my normal parts bins labeled left and right and since I'm looking at the back of the engine this is the left cylinder this is the right so I'm just going to begin disassembling this thing I've also already removed the carb left right Rubber feels fine, and I'm probably gonna at least soak this part so it's a little bit cleaner. Check that out. Doesn't appear to have a ton of runtime. Those valves look so good that I'm probably not even going to drop them. In fact, I may not do much of anything to this other than I probably will. Yeah, I like to get that head and everything all cleaned up. At least the screws are a different length, so it's easy to see which one goes where. Okay, so this engine just really seems like a, I don't know, a pretty low time engine. It's just unfortunate that I have to do this just to change the bearings. But it is a necessary thing. My T pick here and get this shim out. And this engine's in damn good shape. <clears throat> I did go ahead and remove the drive washer off camera. It wasn't stuck or anything. I just needed my puller and I just pulled it off. It didn't require heat or anything. It has a woodruff key holding that in place. So we're getting down to the, the part here where now I'm just going to have to go to work, unfortunately. This guide pin is pushed out. Apparently those are going to come right out, so I'll have to keep mindful of that.